As with any crisis where the well-being of the nation is involved, the origins and repercussions from Los Angeles, in this case, there's a real challenge to the president's leadership, and especially in the middle of an election year. How the president is seen to deal with crisis is probably magnified one way or the other. When Mr. Bush is finished, we'll have the latest from Los Angeles. We'll also hear from Mayor Tom Bradley, Benjamin Hooks of the NAACP, and Governor Bill Clinton. The president will speak to the nation tonight from the Oval Office. Tonight, I want to talk to you about violence in our cities and justice for our citizens. Two big issues that have collided on the streets of Los Angeles. First, an update on where matters stand in Los Angeles. Fifteen minutes ago, I talked to California's Governor Pete Wilson and Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley. They told me that last night was better than the night before, today calmer than yesterday. But there were still incidents of random terror and lawlessness this afternoon. In the wake of the first night's violence, I spoke directly to both Governor Wilson and Mayor Bradley to assess the situation and to offer assistance. There are two very different issues at hand. One is the urgent need to restore order. Uh, what followed Wednesday's jury verdict in the Rodney King case was a tragic series of events for the city of Los Angeles. Nearly 4,000 fires, staggering property damage, hundreds of injuries, and the senseless deaths of over 30 people. To restore order right now, there are 3,000 National Guardsmen on duty in the city of Los Angeles. Another 2,200 stand ready to provide immediate support. To supplement this effort, I've taken several additional actions. First, this morning, I have ordered the Justice Department to dispatch 1,000 federal riot-trained law enforcement officials to help restore order in Los Angeles beginning tonight. These officials include FBI SWAT teams, special riot control units of the U.S. Marshals Service, uh, the Border Patrol, and other federal law enforcement agencies. Second, another 1,000 federal law enforcement officials are on standby alert should they be needed. Third, early today, I directed 3,000 members of the 7th Infantry and 1,500 Marines to stand by at El Toro Air Station, California. Tonight, at the request of the governor and the mayor, I have committed these troops to help restore order. I am also federalizing the National Guard, and I'm instructing General Colin Powell to place all those troops under a central command. What we saw last night and the night before in Los Angeles is not about civil rights. It's not about the great cause of equality that all Americans must uphold. It's not a message of protest. It's been the brutality of a mob, pure and simple. And let me assure you, I will use whatever force is necessary to restore order. What is going on in L.A. must and will stop. As your president, I guarantee you this violence will end. And now let's talk about the beating of Rodney King, because beyond the urgent need to restore order is the second issue, the question of justice, whether Rodney King's federal civil rights were violated. What you saw and what I saw on the TV video was revolting. I felt anger. I felt pain. I thought, how can I explain this to my grandchildren? Civil rights leaders and just plain citizens fearful of and sometimes victimized by police brutality were deeply hurt. And I know good and decent policemen who were equally appalled. I spoke this morning to many leaders of the civil rights community, and they saw the video as we all did. For 14 months, they waited, patiently, hopefully. They waited for the system to work. And when the verdict came in, they felt betrayed. Viewed from outside the trial, it was hard to understand how the verdict could possibly square with the video. Those civil rights leaders with whom I met were stunned. And so was I, and so was Barbara, and so were my kids. But the verdict Wednesday, was not the end of the process. The Department of Justice had started its own investigation immediately after the Rodney King incident and was monitoring the state investigation and trial. 
And so let me tell you what actions we are taking on the federal level to ensure that justice is served. Within, within one hour of the verdict, I directed the Justice Department to move into high gear on its own independent criminal investigation into the case. And next, on Thursday, five federal prosecutors were on their way to Los Angeles. Our Justice Department has consistently demonstrated its ability to investigate fully a matter like this. Since 1988, the Justice Department has successfully prosecuted over 100 law enforcement officials for excessive violence. I am confident that in this case, the Department of Justice will act as it should. Federal grand jury action is underway today in Los Angeles. Subpoenas are being issued. Evidence is being reviewed. The federal effort in this case will be expeditious and it will be fair. It will not be driven by mob violence, but by respect for due process and the rule of law. We owe it to all Americans who put their faith in the law to see that justice is served. But as we move forward on this or any other case, we must remember the fundamental tenet of our legal system. Every American, whether accused or accuser, is entitled to protection of his or her rights. In this highly controversial court case, a verdict was handed down by a California jury. To Americans of all races who were shocked by the verdict, let me say this. You must understand that our system of justice provides for the peaceful, orderly means of addressing this frustration. We must respect the process of law, whether or not we agree with the outcome. There's a difference between frustration with the law and direct assaults upon our legal system. In a civilized society, there can be no excuse, no excuse for the murder, arson, theft, and vandalism that have terrorized the law-abiding citizens of Los Angeles. Mayor Bradley, just a few minutes ago, mentioned to me his particular concern, among others, regarding the safety of the Korean community. My heart goes out to them and all others who have suffered losses. The wanton destruction of life and property is not a legitimate expression of outrage with injustice. It is itself injustice. And no rationalization, no matter how heartfelt, no matter how eloquent, can make it otherwise. Television has become a medium that often brings us together. But its vivid display of Rodney King's beating shocked us. And the America it has shown us on our screens these last 48 hours has appalled us. None of this is what we wish to think of as American. It's as if we were looking in a mirror that distorted our better selves and turned us ugly. We cannot let that happen. We cannot do that to ourselves. We've seen images in the last 48 hours that we will never forget. Some were horrifying, almost beyond belief. But there were other acts, small but significant acts in all this ugliness that give us hope. I'm one who respects our police. They keep the peace. They face danger every day. They help kids. They don't make a lot of money, but they care about their communities and their country. Thousands of police officers and firefighters are risking their lives right now on the streets of LA, and they deserve our support. And then there are the people who've spent each night not in the streets, but in the churches of Los Angeles, praying that man's gentler instincts be revealed in the hearts of people driven by hate. And finally, there were the citizens who showed great personal responsibility, who ignored the mob, who at great personal danger help the victims of violence, regardless of race. Among the many stories I've seen and heard about these past few days, one sticks in my mind. The story of one savagely beaten white truck driver, alive tonight, because four strangers, four black strangers, came to his aid. 
Two were men who had been watching television and saw the beating as it was happening, came out into the street to help. Another was a woman on her way home from work. And the fourth, a young man whose name we may never know. The injured driver was able to get behind the wheel of his truck and tried to drive away, but his eyes were swollen shut. And the woman asked him if he could see, and he answered no, and she said, well, then I will be your eyes. Together, those four people braved the mob and drove that truck driver to the hospital. He is alive today only because they stepped in to help. It is for every one of them that we must rebuild the community of Los Angeles. For these four people and the others like them, who in the midst of this nightmare acted with simple human decency. We must understand that no one in Los Angeles or any other city has rendered a verdict on America. If we are to remain the most vibrant and hopeful nation on earth, we must allow our diversity to bring us together, not drive us apart. This must be the rallying cry of good and decent people. For their sake, for all our sakes, we must build a future where in every city across this country, empty rage gives way to hope, where poverty and despair give way to opportunity. After peace is restored to Los Angeles, we must then turn again to the underlying causes of such tragic events. We must keep on working to create a climate of understanding and tolerance, a climate that refuses to accept racism, bigotry, anti-Semitism, and hate of any kind, anytime, anywhere. Tonight, I ask all Americans to lend their hearts, their voices, and their prayers to the healing of hatred. As president, I took an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, an oath that requires every president to establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility. That duty is foremost in my mind tonight. Let me say to the people saddened by the spectacle of the past few days, to the good people of Los Angeles, caught at the center of this senseless suffering, the violence will end, justice will be served, hope will return. Thank you, and may God bless the United States of America. President Bush speaking to the nation from the Oval Office. You have uh, heard him say that the uh, most immediate concern on his mind and those of the federal authorities to end the violence. He said uh, he's talked to both the governor and the mayor. It is calmer than yesterday, but there is random terror still.